of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. So Baasha slept with his fathers and was buried in Terzah, and uh, Elah his son reigned in his steed. And also by the hand of the prophet Jehu, the son of Hanani, came the word of the Lord against Baasha and against his house, even for all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord in provoking him to anger with the work of his hands and being like the house of Jeroboam and because he killed him. Verse 8, In the twenty and sixth year of Asa king of Judah began Elah the son of Baasha to reign over Israel in Terzah two years. And his servant Zimri captain of half his chariots conspired against him as he was in Terza, and drinking himself drunk in the house of Azar, steward of his house in Terza. And Zimri went in and smote him and killed him in the twenty and seventh, seventh year of Asa king of Judah and reign in his deed. And it came to pass when he began to reign as soon as he sat on his throne that he slew all of the house of Baasha. He left him not one that pisseth against a wall neither of his kinfolks nor of his friends. Thus did Zimri destroy all the house of Baasha according to the word of the Lord which he spake against Baasha by Jehu the prophet. For all the sins of Baasha and the, son, and the sins of Elah his son by which they sinned and by which they made Israel to sin in provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. Now the rest of the acts of Elah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel in the twenty and seventh year of Asa king of Judah did Zimri reign seven days in Terzah and the people were encamped against Gibbethon which belonged to the Philistines. And the people that were encamped heard say, Zimri hath conspired and hath also slain the king. Wherefore all Israel made Amri the captain of the host king over Israel that day in the camp. And Amri went up from Gibbethon and all Israel with him, and they besieged the Terza. And it came to pass when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the palace of the king's house and burnt the king's house over him with fire and died for his sins, which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord in walking in the way of Jeroboam and in his sin which he did to make Israel to sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and his treason that he wrought are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Then were the people of Israel divided into two parts. Half of the people followed uh, Tibni the son of Ganath to make him king, and half followed 
Amni, Amri. But the people that followed Amri prevailed against the people that followed Tibni, the son of Ganath. So Tibni died, and Amri reigned. In the thirty and first year of Asher, king of Judah, began Amri to reign over Israel twelve years. Six years reigned he in Terza. And he bought the hill Samaria of Sheba for two talents of silver and built on the hill and called the name of the city which he built after the name of Sheba, owner of the hill Samaria. But Amri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord and did worse than all that were before him. For he walked in all the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. Now the rest of the acts of Amri which he did and his might that he showed are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Amri slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria and Ahab his son reigned in his stead. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Amri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Amri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Eth. Baal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all of the kings of Israel that were before him. In his days did Hiel the Bethelite build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure to read in your hearing now, First Kings, Chapter Seventeen.
First Kings chapter 17. Here you go. Put it over there for me. Right there. First Kings chapter 17 and Elijah the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Ahab as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Shereth, that is, before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Shereth, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there. Gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, 
and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman the mistress of the house fell sick and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance, and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom, and carried him up into a loft, where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the, unto the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also bought, brought evil upon the widow with whom I surgeon by slaying her son? And uh, he stretched himself upon the child three times, and cried unto the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure to read in your hearing the word of God found in Job chapter 27. Job chapter 27. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment and the Almighty, who hath vexed my soul all the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you 
Till I die, I will not remove mine integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul, will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. He buildeth his house as a moth, and as a booth that the keeper maketh. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Terrors take hold on him, as waters a tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carrieth him away, and he departeth, and as a storm burieth, or rather, as a storm hurleth him out of his place. For God shall cast upon him and not spare, he would fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him, and shall hiss him out of his place. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we pray? Holy Father God in heaven, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word. Have your Holy Spirit to teach us your holy word, to remind us of your holy word, to help us to meditate on your holy word. Have it to continue to break us, make us, and mold us like the hammer breaketh the rock. Help us, Lord, to confess our sins and to repent and to turn from our evil ways and to get back to you, our first love, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, we pray for the salvation of the lost and for the revival of the saved. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and forsake. Amen.
ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and yes, even foes in the family. This is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International, with the Scripture and the Sense podcast, episode number 605, and I am so thrilled to be here with you today, where I read very simply the Word of God, the Holy Bible in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, here a little, there a little. and give the sense of it. I read the Word of God and give the sense of it based on the authority, based on rather an authoritative, reputable commentary source such as the Bible Knowledge Commentary of Dallas Theological Seminary, and Dr. Walvert and Dr. Zuck Editors. Dr. Matthew Henry commentary uh, and other reputable commentaries and uh, study Bibles. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is based upon the Word of God found in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8, where it says, Ezra and the Levites read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. The aim of this podcast is that through the simple reading of the Word of God and the giving of the sense of it, the church would be revived and the world would be awakened and saved from the wrath to come and from the eternal burning hell to come. Dear friends, today we are reading Micah chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. Let's pray. Holy Father, God in heaven, we thank you for your amazing holy word. Forgive us of all of our sins, wash and cleanse our hearts, minds, souls, spirits, and consciences. In the precious blood of Christ, refresh and anew, and fill us with the fullness and the power, the unction, and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Please teach us your Holy Word. Help us to understand it, to apply it to our lives, to share it with others, and to witness to others the gospel of Jesus Christ. For your holy word tells us, for Jesus Christ told us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Micah chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots. And I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Micah chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. Now here is the sense of it, or the understanding of it, from the Bible Knowledge Commentary. In that day the Lord will destroy the horses and chariots in which she trusted. Confer God warned against relying on horses in Deuteronomy 17.16. Cities in which Israel will build strongholds for protection. 
will be demolished. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for the understanding of it. Help us to apply your holy word to our lives and with others. And Lord, help all of us who are named the name of Christ to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with those who don't know your Savior. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and even foes in the family. This is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International, with the White House family devotional reading of Charles Spurgeon's fine devotional book titled Morning and Evening. This is the podcast, and this is episode number 215. The scripture passage that the Prince of Preachers chose for us today is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. The Holy Bible reads, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Dr. Spurgeon asks, Have you come to the blood of sprinkling? The question is not whether you have come to a knowledge of doctrine or an observance of ceremonies or to a certain form of experience. But have you come to the blood of Jesus? As the songwriter said, and I'm adding this, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? The blood of Jesus is the life of all vital godliness. If you have truly come to Jesus, we know how you came. The Holy Spirit sweetly brought you there. You came to the blood of sprinkling with no merits of your own. Guilty, lost, and helpless. You came to take that blood and that blood alone as your everlasting hope. You came to the cross of Christ with a trembling and an aching heart, and oh, what a precious sound it was to you to hear the voice of the blood of Jesus. The dropping of his blood is as the music of heaven to the penitent sons of earth. We are full of sin, but the Savior bids us lift our eyes to him, and as we gaze upon his streaming wounds, each drop of blood as it falls cries, It is finished. I have made an end of sin. I have brought in everlasting righteousness. O sweet language of the precious blood of Jesus, if you have come to that blood once, you will come to it constantly. Your life will be looking unto Jesus. Your whole conduct will be epitomized in this, to whom coming, not to whom I have come. 
but to whom I am always coming. If thou hast ever come to the blood of sprinkling, thou wilt feel thy need of coming to it every day. He who does not desire to wash in it every day has never washed in it at all. Allow me to repeat that in your hearing. He who does not desire to wash in the precious blood of Christ every day has never washed in it at all. The believer ever feels it to be his joy and privilege that there is still a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And I'm adding this. Opened for all of us sinners. Past experiences are doubtful food for Christians. A present coming to Christ alone can give us joy and comfort and assurance. And I'm adding the word assurance. The morning, or rather today, let us sprinkle our doorpost fresh with blood and then feast upon the lamb assured that the destroying angel must pass us by somebody 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 who saved and washed in the blood of the lamb has got to say amen right there amen let's pray holy father god we praise you and we thank you for the lamb of god jesus christ who took away the sins of the world we praise you and we thank you for his precious blood that he shed on the cross for our sins. We thank you, Lord, for him who suffered, bled, and died for our sins, was buried and rose by the power, by your power. Now, Holy Father God, uh, I pray, Lord, for every person under the sound of my voice to understand the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ and to be saved today in Jesus Christ's name we pray because this is another wonderful devotional pastoral devotional at that that we cannot let slip by as it presents the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and so we must present it piggybacking on the Prince of Preachers presenting the gospel to us and to the world in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are here with us today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in other words, you have not been cleansed by the precious and holy blood of Christ, and uh, you have not been saved through faith in Christ, you need to listen to me. Here is how you can be saved from hell, from the power of sin in your life and the punishment of sin called hell. And in this day and time with the coronavirus plague sitting on top of our heads, Please understand how serious this is because you can die at any moment. Death is, has always been imminent, uh, imminent for all of us, but it is more so today. With thousand, over a thousand plus people dying every day in America alone. So you need to get ready, dear friend, for your time of death. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws, and so have I. We all have sinned against God. We all have done evil. All have sinned, the Bible says, and come short of the glory of God. No matter who we are, and we need to acknowledge that. For well, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
that includes the Pope, that includes the Dalai Lama, that even includes Joel Osteen. Everybody, they have sinned too. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. There is a punishment for sin, for the Bible states in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. All of our accumulated sin throughout our lives will be paid for by our death. Our bodies will die and go to the grave. Our souls will go to eternal death in that awful place called hell or the lake of fire if we don't trust Christ as Savior and get saved from the power of sin and the punishment of sin. That leads me to my third point, except the fact that you are on the road to hell. And Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18, 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into hell fire. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than any prophet, any preacher, or any writer in the Bible. Yes, the meek and lowly one was a hell fire and brimstone preacher. Why? Because he loves us and he knows that if you don't trust in him and if you don't believe in him for your soul's salvation, that's where you're going. So hell is bad news. When Jesus described hell at one time, he said it was a place of weeping and wailing of teeth. At another time, Jesus said that hell is a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. So, dear friend, you need to trust in Christ as your Savior. For God so loved the world, Jesus Christ said. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray and ask him. Call on his name and ask him to save you. For the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 13 that if thou, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart, thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead Thou, you shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved to what? Saved to heaven to be with God. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Call on his name and ask him to save you and he will. So dear friend, do that right now. Believe in your heart in Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ, who did no wrong, chose to die on the cross for your sins so that you could go to heaven to be with him. He was buried and he rose on the third day. Believe in Jesus Christ today. And pray and ask him to save you. I'll lead you in the sinner's prayer if you might be a little sir, uh, nervous about that. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. A holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I admit that I've done evil in your sight. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul. 
as I believe and understand that you died for my sins, was buried and rose on the third day. Holy Father, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and help me to turn from my evil ways and to follow you, Lord Jesus, in the new life. For it is in your name I do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ today that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Uh, dear friend, if you trusted in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please email uh, us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we go into part two of uh, the standing between the living and the dead memorial, prayer, devotional, evangelistic service, by way of reminding you of the importance of having family devotions, family worship, family church, family altar, whatever you want to call it. Our quote is from Dr. Arnold Glasgow. As Dr. Arno Glasgow well, let me pronounce that correctly. I'm thinking of something else. Dr. Arno Glasgow, as he talks about family devotions, he says the family fireside is the best of schools, and I agree. You will learn more at the family fireside, devotional time, prayer time, family altar time, whatever you want to call it, family church time. That's right, your family ought to have church each and every day. And the father, the husband, is the pastor. Again, let me remind you, my job is to tell you how God wants things to be and how things should be based upon the Word of God. And I know people don't like to hear me talk about this, but a family is a husband and wife, father and mother and children. That's a family. That's God's definition of a family. 
you can try to make it into something else all you want to. It's not a family. So let's pray for the family. And may I encourage you to pray together, pray for one another, and uh, read the Word of God together each and every day. I don't care what happens. I don't care what the devil does to try to stop you. You take care of that and you move on and you go ahead on and pray and read the Bible anyway and sing a song of Zion as well. I'm told that our uh, another way the devil is attacked this morning is uh, our music is down. And I, I dare not sing a cappella. I, I know I will scare you away from here. So let's pray for the family. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray for the healing of every Christian marriage and family based upon biblical truth. And help us, Lord, uh, to be the husbands and wives and children that you want us to be based upon, which is not what we feel and not what we think and not what we want. So, Holy Father God, heal every marriage and family based upon your Holy Word, found in Ephesians chapter 5 and Ephesians chapter 6. And then, Lord, we pray for the salvation of those families that don't have a clue and don't know you as Savior. Lord, uh, open their blinded eyes and stop their deaf ears and save their souls. Many of them don't know because we have not told them, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our neglect of witnessing to the lost. And Lord, whether you can use us or not, raise up uh, those that you want to raise up to reach the whited harvest field for your glory, praise, and honor until we go on up a little, young, a little higher. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Join me in praying the common prayer if you wish. It is the new common prayer. And I have uh, edited it. And, uh, uh, and as I've said before, you can make any prayer your prayer if what you say. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have sinned and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no and there is no peace and joy in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou us, O God, who confess our sins, our faults, and our failures. Restore those of us who confess our sins and repent according to thy promises declared unto us in Christ Jesus our Lord and grant O most merciful Father for his sake that we may hereafter live a godly righteous and sober life in Jesus Christ's name we pray to the glory of thy holy name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. The three verses that we're reading today in the family verses, these are uh, the passages of Scripture that I tell all families you need to read every day to eliminate problems in your family and to have more order, love, and peace in your family. Ephesians 5 and 6. The 
Today we're reading only three verses, and it's so fitting today. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Children, no matter how old you are, you're still living in your parents' house. Uh, this is talking to you. This is speaking to you. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Doesn't matter how you feel about it, child. Doesn't matter what you think about it, child. It does not matter what you uh, want to do, child. You need to do it God's way, and that is doing it your parents' way in their house. Verse 2, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. You ought to honor. I thank God for my oldest three who are on their own, and they honor me in various and sundry ways, and I thank God for that. And you can't make people honor you. They don't do that because I, I make them do it. I want them to do it. Uh, I ask them to do it. And that's something that they do on their own. Verse 3, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. You want God to bless your life with a long life? and things are well with you, then honor and obey and love your parents. Then at this time, ladies and gentlemen, join me in prayer as we pray for all of the people who are grieving, all of the people who are in shock at lost loved ones, Join me in praying for those who are sick. Pray for those in the government, our families and friends, whatever the case. Law enforcement, medical workers, and others. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for all of the leaders, government leaders in, in this country and around the globe. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for all believers in Christ, wherever they might be. Lord, help us to humble ourselves, help us to repent, help us to turn from our evil ways, our wicked ways, and help us to get back to you, our first love. And to turn from all of our evil ways and repent. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for the government and everybody in the government, all governors, all mayors, all police chiefs, all sheriffs. We pray for all of the senators, all of the representatives, all of the city council folks. And Lord, we pray for their salvation. We pray for salvation, spiritual, family life, protection and provision blessings, Lord, upon these people. Lead them, guide them, and direct them in the way that you will have. Lord, us to go, turn their hearts from evil and for good. And Lord, I do pray 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would heal those who are sick, help those who are saved to call for the elders of the church not to come over but to pray for them via the phone. And, uh, Lord, we pray for the salvation of all who are lost in this country, around the globe, and in the media. And, uh, Lord, we pray for the revival of all who are saved in this country, around the globe, and in the media as well. And Holy Father God, we pray for all of the people who are hurting in the millions because of the death of loved ones with the coronavirus plague. And Lord, we pray that you will strengthen them as only you can. And we pray for everybody. But Lord, we can only pray for a few here. And we pray by name for the family and friends of New York doctor Thomas Patu Gallen. We pray for the family and friends of Ohio doctor uh, Jeannie Danker. We pray for the family and friends of Louisiana nurse Larish Anderson. We pray for the family and friends of uh, Michigan nurse Davinia Akkad. We pray for the family and of New York nurse Romy Octorop. We pray for the family and friends of Illinois nurse Felicia Elende. And we pray for the family and friends of Michigan Dr. Nancy Ajaman. And we pray for the family and friends of Maryland nurse Queen Agbor Echo. We pray for the family of and friends of Michigan nurse Lori Alioa. We pray for the family and friends of New York Dr. Narissa Armesto. We commit these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives and in ours. Holy Father God, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the protection of Israel, we pray for all other countries in the world, all, prime minister, all other prime ministers, supporting mirrors, save their souls and lead God and direct them in the way that you want them to go. And Holy Father God, we pray now for the uh, some of the prayer requests that have come in. We pray for all of the people. Help them, Lord, to uh, uh, all of the people who have sent in prayer requests. Help them to hum to turn from uh, the wicked ways and to get back to you, our first love. Lord, help all of us to do that. And then, Lord, we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, financial, material, physical, life, protection, and uh, provision blessings, Lord, upon all of the people and deliver them from their housing crisis problems, food crisis problems, and from the coronavirus plague, and from the fires, and from the hurricanes that are coming all at the same time. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Bushibi, Pastor Bushibi, please save uh, Sister Rosalind's youngest son and entire family. Bless them with uh, infrared thermometers, Bibles for new believers, supplies for orphans and widows, food safe, 
uh, domestic water, uh, bikes for pastors, uh, resources for the rural outreach program, and materials to combat land flooding. We pray for Isaac. Please bless him donations to make take care of the awful children, uh, people, patients, slum villages, uh, and build the church planting ministry. We pray for Vicki. Uh, please heal Andrew of a rare cancer. Be with his family and medical team. We pray for Yenisil. Please help all cyberbullying to stop. Help her husband to be put, to be a great father and husband. Help her to be a great wife and mother. Provide them with a good church home. 